Well, results from last night's wild midterm elections are still rolling in, and several races are still too close to call, including control of both the House and Senate, so we have to be patient. As of right now, our decision desk here at Late Night is using very cautious language to describe the state of the race this way. With 87% of precincts reporting, we can now project the Republicans up and the bed like a bunch of jabronis. I forgot to mention our election guy is from New Jersey, like Dr. Oz. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Oh, man, where to begin, you guys? I turned my phone off last night at 7 p.m. and went to bed. Didn't even check the results until I dropped my kids off at school. So I am well-rested and feeling good. Now, you might say, Seth, you knew you'd have to address the election today. How could you just tune out like that? It's easy. I made my staff pull an all-nighter and... <laughs> Should be noted, they look like <laughs> today. <laughs> Point is, I tuned out because, as I'm sure you all heard, going into this election, pundits, especially on the right, but across the media spectrum, were certain that Democrats were going to get absolutely annihilated. 15 days to the midterms, and there's more and more signs of a red wave. I really believe it's going to be a strong red wave for the Republicans. It's going to be a big red wave. Do you think the red wave is coming? I mean, like, winter is coming. It's a red wave coming. You're of the mindset, it's red wave. Absolutely. I think that this is going to be a big uh, red wave. It'll be a huge red wave, and it'll be a big blue wipeout. They are very, very concerned about this you know, red riptide, if not a red wave, if not a, a red tsunami. I see not a red wave. I see a red tsunami. We're not just going to see a red wave. We're going to see a red tsunami. Now, that last one was a bit of a giveaway, because if there was truly a tsunami coming, we all know Ted Cruz would have been on the first flight to Cancun. <laughs> Red waves are great, but I prefer the blue waves outside the Cancun Ritz-Carlton. I'll bring you back a conch fritter. Stay warm, everybody. Also, I did appreciate the Game of Thrones reference. Do you think the red wave is coming? I mean, like, winter is coming. It's a red wave coming? I would say it was less like a red wave and more like a red wedding. The Republicans were the Starks, and Donald Trump was a dragon who burned his whole party to a crisp. And don't just take my word for it. Listen to Republicans and right-wing pundits themselves who spent the last 24 hours wringing their hands Wondering where it all went wrong. I thought the political conditions were such that would uh, suggest a red wave. The polling said otherwise. And I was skeptical of the polling. The polling held up pretty well tonight. The big red wave that was predicted uh, has not happened yet. There wasn't a red wave. That is a searing indictment of the Republican Party. That is a searing indictment of the message that we have been sending to the voters. The Republican Party needs to do a really deep introspection look in the mirror right now because this is this is an absolute disaster definitely not a republican wave that's for darn sure this is definitely not a republican wave it's more like the wave my mima makes when she jumps in the bathtub with me <laughs> she barely moves water because she's about 84 pounds soaking wet <laughs> mima i'm a grown man <laughs> i don't take baths with you anymore mima now, on one hand, there's still much to be decided. Control of both houses of Congress is essentially a toss-up right now, and Republicans could still end up winning both the House and the Senate. So it's wise to be cautious. But on the other hand, despite strong political headwinds, including the fact that historically the party in power tends to get swamped in the midterms, the race for both the House and Senate is essentially a toss-up as of this taping, which is crazy. Democrats actually flipped some long-held Republican House seats in states like Ohio, while also winning back governorships in states like Maryland and Massachusetts. Americans voted to protect abortion rights in several states through ballot initiatives, including in Kentucky, expanded Medicaid in South Dakota, guaranteed a right to unionize in Illinois, and legalize marijuana in Missouri. At this point, I wouldn't be shocked if we found out voters in Kansas passed a ballot initiative to make drag queen bingo night mandatory on all U.S. military bases. <laughs> Which they should, because that would be fun as hell. <laughs> By far the most dramatic and my favorite example of how poorly things went for Republicans last night is a shocking development in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, where Lowen Borbert is, as of this taping, trailing her Democratic opponent in a race absolutely no one thought would be competitive. In Colorado, a hardline pro-Trump Republican on the ropes, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, behind by a few thousand votes right now. This is Lauren Boebert's seat here. Not even a seat that we considered to be competitive leading into Election Day. Lauren Boebert is trailing by about 3,500 votes. Lauren Boebert is a election-denying, very conservative Republican. Democrats would love to unseat her. I I'm not sure they thought they had a chance to. They have a chance. I'm not saying I was excited last night when I saw those results, but I did rush into my kids' room at 3 a.m. to shake them and scream, wake up, Lauren Boebert is losing, and they know 
who she is, because I tell them if they don't eat their vegetables, they'll get a visit from the Boberduke. <laughs> By the way, if you're confusing her with Sarah Palin, who's also running for Congress this year in Alaska, don't worry, they're both losing, so you don't even need to keep them straight. <laughs> By far the biggest prize of the night was in Pennsylvania, where both the governorship and the Senate seat, which is held by a retiring Republican, were seen as two of the most closely watched races when election season began. Democratic candidate for governor Josh Shapiro ran away with it and crushed his pro-Trump election denier opponent, Doug Mastriano. But the even bigger victory for Democrats and possibly the biggest disappointment of the night for Republicans was the Senate race. Fox News can project that Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman wow. will win the Pennsylvania Senate race over Dr. Mehmet Oz. Uh, this is a huge win for the Democrats. Wow, I can't believe a candidate with no government experience who lives in New Jersey and reportedly killed over 300 dogs lost a race for Senate in Pennsylvania. <laughs> the only way Oz could have been a worse candidate in Pennsylvania was if he was seen in a devil's jersey fighting with Gritty screaming, 7-Eleven is better than Wawa and Sheets. <laughs> Oz's closing argument included, among other things, posting an incredibly bizarre photo of himself standing under a sign displaying gas prices on the side of the road like he was looking to sell some of his off-brand diet pills and urging people this past Saturday to contact 10 other potential supporters saying, do it before the Steelers game, despite the fact that there was no Steelers game on Sunday, the team had a bye week. And any Pittsburgher worth their salt would tell you that not knowing the Steelers had a bye week is a total jag-off move. But I'm being hard on him. I do think Oz knows Pittsburgh well, based on this clip he put out where he very naturally mentioned what the city is known for. I love, love being in Pittsburgh. Now, people think I come here for the food, and I do like beer and sandwiches, but it's the food for thought that I really came to Pittsburgh for. Okay, Russian spy from the 50s. <laughs> Hello, local barkeep. I am here for beer and sandwiches. Also, is true there is nuclear power plant in town? How would curious visitor take tour to see up close? <laughs> Part of the reason Fetterman's win was such a big deal was because many in the Republican bubble clearly thought it was impossible. Some right-wing pundits straight up said in advance there was no way it could happen and that it would be ridiculous to wake up on Wednesday to a Fetterman victory. It's not about the person, it's about the party. It's not about the individual, it's about the group. And to prove it, they can even run mentally defective candidates who can barely speak and not only expect them to win, but expect you to accept the outcome no matter how transparently absurd it is. On November 9th, they'll be telling you that John Fetterman got 81 million votes in Pennsylvania and they'll threaten to put you in jail if you don't believe it. Why wouldn't they do that? He worked with Joe Biden. Why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they tell you John Fetterman won and threaten to put you in jail if you don't believe it? And when you're in jail, why wouldn't they put you on laundry duty? And when you tell them you've never done your own laundry before and don't know how it works, why wouldn't the other inmates laugh at you? And when you tell them to stop laughing because it's not funny, why wouldn't they put you in the dryer where you would get tossed around with a load of their underpants, I should add, for 45 minutes? Why wouldn't they do that? Because they did it to me. <laughs> in high school. And again in college. I bet when Tucker woke up this morning and saw the results, he made that face he always makes, like he buzzed in on Jeopardy and forgot what he was going to say. <laughs> And yet, Fetterman very much did win, as Tucker's own network explained this morning. When it comes to the state of Pennsylvania, why did Dr. Oz lose? Well, it looks like, according to uh, the exit polling, it's because Fetterman won. Yeah! <laughs> that is historically how it works. When one candidate loses, the other wins. Although, in fairness, there are probably Republicans who need that explained to them. Whoa! If Warnock loses, I win? Oh, that is not a good idea. <laughs> no, again, there are many races that have yet to be called and still a wide range of possibility. Current projections, as of this taping, range anywhere from Democrats holding both the House and Senate to raise their thin majorities for Republicans. But from what we already know, this election went much better than Joe Biden could have possibly expected, given the stiff political headwinds he was facing and history, because incumbent parties almost always lose tons of seats in the midterms, and yet Biden managed to outperform those expectations despite constant second guessing, even from his fellow Democrats, about his strategy. It's a better night than expected for the Democrats. You know, what are you hearing from the White House? Oh, big change of mood from the White House in the past 24 hours. That they feel excitement mixed with some validation uh, because they managed, they think, to buck a historic trend. They didn't lose dozens of seats the way previous presidents have. So the lesson is, Tim don't Ryan. bet no. against 
Joe Biden. Don't bet against Biden. Politically, yeah. the guy always finds a way, it seems. That's right. Whatever you think of him, never bet against an old man who spent more time in Scranton dive bars than most people have at their actual jobs. <laughs> Joe Biden is the Mike Ehrmantraut of American politics. You think you can jump him on a dark street and take his wallet, and the next thing you know, you're rolling on the ground, yelling, my arm! You broke my arm! Here's what we're gonna do now. <laughs> finally, finally found it right at the last minute. You know, we have a tendency to think of Biden as a doddering old man because, you know, he's an old man who sometimes daughters. But after last night's results, I'm starting to think he might actually be the greatest political mastermind of our generation. Maybe the whole Mr. Magoo thing is a put on. You know how he's always putting his head in his hands while answering questions or getting stuck on stage like a motion center Santa Claus that <laughs> runs out of batteries? Maybe it's an all an act to disguise the fact that he's actually a Machiavellian genius who's constantly doing electoral math in his head while the rest of us are having fun laughing at his gaffes. He's sitting there saying, laugh it up, mother <laughs> I'm about to have the best midterm result for a sitting president in two decades. Biden's performance last night was certainly much better than Donald Trump's, who's getting all the blame from his party for backing a bunch of weirdos, clowns, and bozos who's got creamed in their races. Last night was, if nothing else, clearly a strong repudiation of Trumpism from voters, and that's according to almost everyone except, of course, brace yourselves, Trump himself. You've endorsed more than 330 candidates this yeah. election cycle. Uh, tonight, win or lose, the results for Republicans, um, how much of that will be because of Donald Trump? Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all, OK? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Although I'm sure it's not the first time he's tried. I want to bet $100 on the Jets, but here's the thing. If they win, you pay me. If they lose, I get my money back. <laughs> I mean, of course that's what Trump would say. That's how he's operated his whole life. He wants credit for everything and blame for nothing. He's the definition of a heads I win, tails you lose kind of guy, except he still somehow manages to lose. Heads I win, tails you lose, and now let's flip the coin, and it has been snatched out of the air by the IRS. I owe them $1 billion in back taxes, and they're taking it one quarter at a time. <laughs> so Democrats won a bunch of key races last night, despite dire predictions of a red wave that fizzled out. Now control of both the House and the Senate is, as of this taping, still up for grabs, which is in itself a wild outcome and a huge disaster for Republicans, among many other things. We learned last night that people are just tired of Donald Trump's clown car of bozos and dip <laughs> They want to protect democracy. They want to protect reproductive rights. They want competent governance, and they want to vote for candidates in one election who aren't going to ignore their votes in the next one. They just want to go about their lives like ordinary Americans and enjoy their beer and sandwiches. <laughs> this has been A Closer Look.